gonna make the tortilla from scratch. Take it out from the case, mix it together. So it has a lot of story, it has a lot of flavors involved in it. It's delicious, so I'm just gonna do that. Do this little paste. Gonna have some chili verde there. Just make sure you grind everything slowly. Looks good in there. We'll bring this kumquat, and, and, and it's not a time as well. It's <laughs> exact amount that you need. You don't have to go overboard. I love eating. I want to be with someone who likes eating as well. What's your favorite late food? Oh, it's bad, but I I really like cheeseburgers, Chris. I go for really? late night cheeseburgers. For the late night cheeseburger? Yeah, late night cheeseburger. Okay, <laughs> Jesus, that's awesome. So I, I just opened the pork French garlic uh, sausage. I'm just gonna like open up the casing I cut right in the middle. And I'm just gonna throw this right here with the pineapple, guys. Cheeseburgers. <laughs> at 11 p.m.? Sometimes I do it at 1 a.m. Nice, nice. Is there a favorite place to do that? Or are you, are um, you an In-N-Out person? I'm an In-N-Out person. Yeah. yeah. Have you had In-N-Out? Curious. You know, In-N-Out twice. Wow, two times. Do you believe me? No, I, seriously, do you believe me? I, I, I would have thought you went there at least 20 times, Chris, but two Fuck. times, I'm impressed. 20 times? Yeah, I've been there at least a thousand, Chris. Okay, I've been there a thousand times. Oh, shit, what am I missing? I mean, like, what the fuck am I missing? I, I've been there twice. The first time I went there, I thought the sauce was ridiculous like <laughs> yeah. ridiculous like good ridiculous you know yeah, like animal style sauce, right? oh my so, god the sauce from the animal style, animal style yeah. it's where it is i can eat that with anything yeah like any i don't make anything taste good because i figure it out i mean it's, it doesn't take a genius to figure it out they give you three things yes and that sauce acidity salt yes. and sugar so it's like everything is there you know it's like what else do you want at that time, you know? Like, do you go for a double one or you go for like a single cheeseburger? Um, I go for four by four, Chris. Four by four? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're insane. I actually ate a 10 by 10, Chris, at work. A 10 by yeah, 10? Yeah, we did a competition. I came in fourth out of five people. How long does it take you to eat a 10 um, by 10? It about 20 to 25 minutes for me, but the winner finished in 15 minutes. He's a football player too. 10 patties. I'm guessing like each patty is like four ounce. Yeah, 10 patties and 10 cheeses and two uh, two slices of bread. And did they put sauce in there? They put sauce on it, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. And actually. we also did a large milkshake and animal style fries, Chris. What? <laughs> That's insane. Okay, so I just put it in there. I, I use a wok. It's easy to use. Yeah. Guys, use whatever you want at home, okay? Don't try to like get a French cooked up or something like that. Just cook what is useful. That's it. Like I use a wok because it's easy to maneuver. I use a cast iron because it burns things like right away. Yeah. And if you want to accelerate stuff, just grab the torch and then just burn everything in the kitchen. You know, it's your kitchen. You do whatever you want. So like, if you want to burn the tomatillos, do it. Don't That's be afraid amazing, of it. Chris. Most people see this in a commercial, but they never see it in real life before. A blowtorch against an actual... Yeah, do it. Wow. Game over. Now that we got that, we're gonna go into flavors. Can I pour yeah. you a drink? <laughs> sure. We got in this new flavor thing called Chilong. I went and got this mezcal with my wife. This was a $160 up there. Wow. Yeah, and I like it. I really like it a lot. So I use these cool little cups that everything needs to make sense. It's not just the alcohol. Yes. Because alcohol is like drug, right? Right. It, this can be really bad, right? If you don't know how to take care of yourself, and this is for everybody out there, like drink and respect the people who you're with. Don't just get drunk and be a douchebag, you know? This is a $160 bottle. Yes. And it's a shot of that. And what I do is I grab the mezcal. I bought this thing, it's called Michelada. I really like it. Uh, they sell it at my local store. And I just pour a little bit of that. Wow, look at that color, Chris. Talk about how light. Yeah, so light. I wanted to have everything in one glass. I was like, I want my shot, I want my michelada, and I want my Bloody Mary. That's the three things that I enjoy. That's how I came out with this recipe. I use the Chilon, which is also one of our products from the Unique Blends. And make sure you take the lead off. Don't make that mistake that I made first time. <laughs> And I just pour about one tablespoon of that in there. Even the color blends really well with the michelada. Yeah, it's perfect. And, and you can smell it. And then I added Indio. It's one of my favorite Mexican beers. It's so hard to find them. Yeah, Indio. I love that beer, guys. It's hard to find. Uh, get it up there. Do you have a style to open beers? I usually use a doorknob, to be honest it, with you. It, <laughs> I got a really cool one. I got a really cool one, but the, yeah. the spoon is my favorite because done. Wow, look at that. That's all you need. Quick. That's all you need. So. I pour the rest of it. It has like a golden brown color, the beer. 
It's like kind of caramelized. Yeah, it is. Color. It is. That's one of my favorite drinks. As I'm cooking, you can start smelling things. Again, same thing, beer, michelada, lime, and then the chilon. Chilon, big things. About one tablespoon of that. And top it up, you know, like, just all the way to the top. Perfect for like, a date at the beach, but I also like it when it's rainy. Yeah, it has a beautiful color too. Oh, oh I made a blend. It's just a waterfall, it's happiness right there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Boom. Nobody saw it. Magic trick. <laughs> Cheers, Troy. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Yeah, thank you for being here. Mm. What do you think about that? I've never. I've never. You never imagined that, never. right? I thought I was drinking meat juice. Meat juice. Like from like a steak. Like it has an umami kind of taste. It's too. crazy. Like it's yeah, micheladas, bro. I never thought seasoning from the next day employee would ever be used in a drink. It's wow. perfect. We, we created for that reason because yeah. we wanted to season up your drink. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's how we got there. Chris, you know what's funny? In Los Angeles, a lot of people try to do this, but the seasoning gets overpowered by the alcohol. You yeah. can't taste the seasoning. You can't, it, but here is a nice blend. It is. I don't know how you figure out the, the equation. Cheers. After pouring so many of this one, you know, I was yeah. like, it needs to be a match of this and a match of that. This is good, man. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot when I go to the beach, to be honest. Yeah. I just take a little little glass. Everyone, if Chris opened a bar, he would walk out every day with like hundreds of dollar bills and tips. Yeah. They're gonna be like, we never had anything like this. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. I could drink like a hundred of these, Chris, but I'll probably forget my name at the end day. Well, Chilon is also good. I recommend it. All the new astronauts are going to Mars. Mm -hmm. They are taking a Chilon with them. They have it up there. It's on the moon, it's on Mars. It's in New York, it's in Los Angeles, in Texas. It's everywhere, you know, it is fire, right? Yeah, it's like you have a fiery kind of aftertaste, but what's really great is you first taste the spices and then you end up with the really nice after effect of like the smooth blend. That is incredible. That is incredible. Alright, so we got this done. Wow. Beautiful roasting. I mean scrap the okay. Kaisar. And that is all you need. At that. Yeah, we just take that off. I'm gonna place it right here next to it. The mocajete. It looks amazing. Then I'm gonna grab the same thing I was using early. I'm just gonna smash the kumquats. You want that, okay? Because you want that burn. Because imagine if you did this in the grill, mm -hmm. you would have all the chilies like burn. Yeah. So you want that. You want as much things you can burn. Burn is good, man. You know, I talk about fire sometimes, and I say like how burn things, they actually add a flavor to the stuff. Mm -hmm. But to tacos, man, when you put that acidity, you need something burning right there, especially right next to the fat. If it's greasy, you, you want something that it, I just crave everything that it makes sense. Now that's interesting. Most people, they're scared when they see something burn, they think that's not usable, but you're seeing that it brings another element out in the taste. Yeah, yeah, I would say don't be scared. And Chris, you use this like technique where when there's fire, you use your hand at different levels, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I do that. Yeah. I, I'm a daredevil. So like I go in there and I try to see if it burns. And if it does, I want to know at what level it actually burns. Temperature, let's say you start a fire, right? Then if you put your hand right next to the fire, you're gonna burn it. If you put it up, you're gonna have all these peaks in between that you can control. And I think that is really unique, you know, like there's all these peaks that you can control. Yeah. When you're cooking, that means you can do things in different temperatures. For someone who never cooks, put your hands on the fire and see what it feels. Burn yourself. No, don't do that, folks. <laughs> don't do that. What Chris is trying to say is don't be afraid of the resources yeah, you use do to Do not make be food. afraid. Being afraid, is, it just doesn't mix right in the kitchen, you know? You have to try. You have to try it as much as you can. All right, so now that we got a little nice smash, peppers, mocajete looks great, right? We put it all together. Now I'm gonna use a blender. We're gonna blend these bad boys. Let's go. Wow, just look at that. It looks great. We got some sweet flavors. We got some stuff that is gonna create a little bit of a, of a wooden burn type of flavor. The burn is good. So And then back in the... That smells so good. That's gonna be our salsa. Wow. It's 
gonna be our spicy salsa, folks. Yeah, the sauce is fire. Chris, how important is sauces and seasonings to you? Huge, huge, huge for a chef. It allows you to cook something delicious and the sauce is what helps you complement that. For a customer, the sauce is what makes you come back. I mean, look at it in and out man. in and out got a crazy sauce. The monster burger. I always ask for extra bacon and they tell me back, they're like, no man, you can't do that here. <laughs> It's like, really? How much secure you are about a sauce? That you just like, that's all you need. You need the patty, the bread, and the sauce, right? And then the mac sauce, fire too. So the sauce, man, it's where it is. It yeah. makes you hide things. If you made a mistake, it makes you hide it. Correct. But it also makes highlight things that are delicious. I love sauces. And, and, and to me, the sauce have to want to make it taste it good, man. It's something that you just keep putting your finger on it, you know? You know what I mean? It, like, it elevates the entree. Like, it, it really brings it to the next level. Exactly, yeah. it makes me want to miss it. That's the way I feel about sauces, man. Cheers, bro. Cheers, Chris. What's going on, man? You're keeping, it, you're keeping it lean in there. All right, <laughs> cheers. Hey, everyone, see? I'm drinking with Chris. We got some chillon. Yeah, yeah we, we're working. So, some really cool stuff, too. We're gonna be, we're gonna be working on some mushrooms. Guys, awesome. just do your thing, you know, destroy them. Cook them together, bam, bam, bam. That's all I got right there, all that together. And then on the top, I'm just gonna go some Romanescos. Just the tip. Just the tip, everyone. Just the tip, guys. You don't want everything. You don't want everything, you know? Sometimes you just want a little bit. Yeah, use the right proportions. Yeah, use whatever you want, but use the best of it, you know? Like, go for the best, that's it. Have you ever seen that combination before? Yellow oyster mushrooms. Okay, then we got a little bit of Romanesco. Then we got some baby mushrooms in there as well. Wow. After that, this is gonna go into the plant-based meat that we got. We got some Beyond sausage and we got some Beyond beef. Guys, fire. Uh, we're gonna use some really cool ingredients on this chimichurri blend we got. It's called a unique blend. It goes perfect with plant-based. It goes perfect with anything. Yeah. It's non-GMO, it's gluten-free, it's soy-free, low sodium, it's kosher, it's vegan. It has it all, guys. It's like innovative uh, spice company out there. I love it. Usually only hits one, like vegan-free or... Yeah, like no, no. Free. They're doing it all. They're yeah. doing it all. They, that's, that's the way things should be, man, in the kitchen. We should definitely be considered about our health. We're eating this stuff, so mushroom from the ground, from the soil, this beautiful wild cut from Oregon. Now we got some beautiful Romanescos. And last but not least, guys, let's add some shallots into it. Let's go, shallots. Okay. Boom. Take it off. Make it dirty, you know? Make it dirty. Make it dirty. Put your fingers in there. Make sure your nails smell like onions. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Chris is trying to say you interact with your food, making sure you come home with the food. Yeah, make love to it, you know? Enjoy. Make love. That's such a good saying. Yeah, make love to your food, man. Like, that's how you do it. That's how you get there. Okay. That's all I need. That's it. Now, we're gonna get in here. We're gonna get on the fire. And then we're just gonna put this at medium high heat. Again, I'm gonna sprinkle some chimichurri, guys. Chimichurri, look at that. Wow. Look at that beautiful color. I put a lot in there because I really enjoy that. And then the next thing is, I got this beer that I've been enjoying. I'm just gonna pour beer all over. Oh my goodness. You know, we're, gonna, that. we're gonna let that yeast do their thing, you know? Yeah, and it's gonna pick up all the seasoning along with it, stick in the bottom like a lovely pool. Yeah, that's it. Oh. So we got this working on this side, and then we got, on the other side, we got a little bit of pork, a little bit of beef working. We got a little bit of pineapples. Ooh, nice, sweet, savory, put it together Yeah, this is, one. this is gonna be great. It's also gonna have some chilon. Yep. So the chilon is gonna go in here. And then... Take note of how that pigment goes against the actual pineapple and the, the beef, wow. Yeah. Beautiful colors. Beautiful colors. Beautiful flavors. The smells is out there. You wanna get that reindeer really, really nice. You wanna get that beautiful pineapple to release all the sugars. And then you wanna check out on these oysters and let them do the thing. It's gonna take about 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we got the pork and the beef, the animal-based food with the pineapple. It's gonna take another seven minutes. We're gonna cover this up. Uh, and then we're just gonna let her do the thing. We got the sauce going on this side. And then right at the end, right when we're missing like seven minutes to go, we're gonna drop in the plant-based ground beef. 
and then we're gonna drop in the plant-based hot Italian sausage. Guys, it's fire. I love this stuff. I know a lot of people in there, you know. I know Ethan, the CEO from Beyond Meat. I, I know a lot of people in there, you know. I work with them. I have a lot of love for them. They're doing the right thing. This is where it is. Uh, I love this ground beef, man. It just makes me feel good every time I eat it. They're changing the game out there. You know my boy Ethan, he's working hard to do that. Chris was also part of the R&D process. He was testing throughout the multiple phases. I was. Making sure the colors match, how it bleeds from the beet juice. Yeah. How it tastes, how it sits after 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Chris was part of this entire process because at the end of the day, you not only want to make sure it tastes like beef, but you want to make sure it mimics the natural feel of beef as well. That's correct, that's correct. Yeah, those guys, you know, I'm not longer with them, but they're doing a great job. Collaborating to a better world. I like to work with people like that. I like people who is like constantly doing new things. Make yourself better, that's the way it goes. If you know something good, teach somebody. Keep learning, keep moving. All right guys, so we back to it. The pork is looking good in there, man. We put a little bit of sausage, put a little beer in that mushroom, and it's starting to make a little broth. So I mix all these flavors together. So much color. You don't want to make the Romanescos too tender, so you want to keep them crispy. This is also going to have some avocados involved. This is going to be fire, guys. you never seen this out there. I don't think, all the respect to a lot of food trucks out there and all the respect to a lot of the new movement for tacos, for burrito late night, for burgers late night. I get it, okay? I get the munchies, I'll go and get some good tacos, I get some good stuff either vegan, animal-based, pork, but it's always the same, you know? It's always the same, it's always traditional. I know we paid a lot of respect to people in the back days when, you know, we were doing the carnitas, the chicharron, the avocado, salsa, and all of that, right? But play some stuff that is weird, you know? Like, make it weird. Like, how courage you go against the pattern, right? Like, the established, exactly. the established traditions, like, yeah. like, innovate. Yeah, make yourself uncomfortable sometimes. Like, the one and two and three is perfect. Like, I usually play that a lot. One, two, three ingredients, that's it. You don't have to put 10 of them, you don't have to do too much, you know? Just keep it simple, keep it humble, keep it tasty, you know? So here we go, guys. This is coming along, it's starting to grab some beautiful color. Wow. Chris is trying to say everyone, we still respect tradition, but also have the ability to try new things, be uncomfortable, because you want to try new discoveries. That's how you grow as a person and become a better chef in a way as well because yeah. the more comfortable you are, that means you're challenging yourself to try and learn new skills. I think a lot of chefs got that from messing up, you know? 